Hey friends, it's Dr. Chan here. In this video, I am going to share with you five reasons on why not to get a vasectomy. We're going to talk about all the things that could possibly go wrong after getting a vasectomy. Number one, bleeding. Excessive bleeding happens in about 5% of cases following a vasectomy. It happens within the first 48 hours. There's things that you can do to prevent it, such as stopping aspirin, Advil, or other non-steroidal anti-inflammatories about a week before your vasectomy. So bleeding in the scrotum can sometimes lead to a hematoma, which is a collection of blood in a certain space. The problem with the scrotum is that it is very unforgiving. It tends to stretch. In fact, I've seen in rare cases so much bleeding that the scrotum swelled up to the size of a small coconut. Number two, infection. So infection can occur in about 4% of gentlemen after an, an, a vasectomy. Usually it's right at the skin surface, kind of where the incision is made. There are some things that you can do to kind of prevent this. Namely, I usually prescribe patients antibiotics for about five days after the procedure just to make sure that no infection develops. What's also really common is sometimes the epididymis, which is the thing that's attached to your testicle, can develop epididymitis. It can be very tender, sometimes swollen, and fortunately, usually a short course of antibiotics for about 10 days will usually do the trick in terms of clearing it up. Number three, sperm granula. So sometimes the cut end of the vas deferens can leak out some sperm or semen into the scrotal tissue. This causes this inflammatory reaction by your body that sees the sperm and tries to wall it off. So you end up with this small mass almost in your scrotum that tends to be pretty painful, somewhat tender. The mass isn't dangerous, it's not cancer. Most of the time you can just take some anti-inflammatories like Advil um, to help with the discomfort. But every so rarely you have to go back in and actually remove this sperm granuloma. This happens in about 15 to 40 percent of men who undergo a vasectomy. One way to kind of prevent this is to put a small clip on the cut end of the vas deferens just so that there's not as much ability of that end to leak sperm out. Number four, post vasectomy pain syndrome. So this is where the epididymis ends up swelling because there's nowhere for that sperm to go and that this can cause a chronic sense of scrotal or testicular pain. There is some debate over how often this happens. In some literature, it says less than 1%, whereas in other studies, it shows that about 15% of people end up experiencing pain following a vasectomy. Usually, the way we treat post-vasectomy pain syndrome is with anti-inflammatories like Advil, sitz baths, where you throw some sitz salts into hot water to try to soak it, and just give it some time to see what happens. If the simple stuff isn't enough, sometimes we can do a steroid injection or a nerve block of the nerve going to the testicle and scrotum. And then in worst case scenarios, we may sometimes have to reverse the vasectomy where we reattach the two cut ends of the, the vas deferens so that there's an outlet for all that sperm to go. A good rule of thumb, if you are considering a vasectomy, is that if you already have testicular pain, a chronic testicular pain, undergoing a vasectomy will probably not fix it and in some cases may actually make it a lot worse. So be careful. Number five, the final reason not to get a vasectomy is not anything about side effects or complications, but it's more if you are in a situation where you're planning to divorce your wife and marry someone much younger, 
I would say don't get a vasectomy. In these instances, whenever we have to do vasectomy reversals, we found that the situation is usually somebody who had a vasectomy in the past with their first wife or after their, after their first marriage and then remarried someone much younger, possibly, um, who wanted children of their own. So if you are in that situation, spare yourself the, some pain and discomfort by just not getting vasectomy. So there you have it, five reasons on why not to get a vasectomy, all the things that could possibly go wrong with your vasectomy. If you're still interested after watching this video, then check out this Plato model that I put together so that you can understand what's involved with the vasectomy.